an overview over the bigger picture with the goal of eradication of arteriosclerosis. Now, eradication is a word which is not so frequently used in the context of arteriosclerosis, and so I would like to find two things. We could define as a working definition cure of arteriosclerosis as a treatment which is given once or a few times and leading to a per period, for example, of 10 years where we can forget the disease and the treatment at the hospital. And we can eradicate, uh, define eradication in society as a state where no clinical cases occur in a society. Why is arteriosclerosis a prime candidate or target for arteriosclerosis? Because it's the most frequent cause of death and because it's one of the most expensive diseases we have in the Western world. Uh, another reason to er uh, eradicate arteriosclerosis is the, is the problem that in half of the cases we cannot detect it because before a major catastrophic complication. So current detection is too late when it's already happened and current therapies are mainly palliative as I have shown in the initial talk. Let me just remind us that arteriosclerosis is not a degenerative disease. We see frequently very old patients who come to us, for example, for arteric stenosis, who have completely clean coronary arteries. So it's not just a thing we have to live with because it's the fate of biology. It's a specific disease. Arteriosclerosis is not just a plaque. It's a lifestyle disease. And there are many factors, risk factors, genes, Western lifestyle, cholesterol, diabetes, cigarettes, hypertension. Unfortunately, we cannot eradicate arteriosclerosis with lifestyle recommendations because people do, do not adhere to it. Nevertheless, it's important to remind our patients whenever we have contact with them that it's important. Arteriosclerosis and lifestyle, a very interesting study I stumbled upon is the fact that one hour of watching TV costs you 22 minutes of your life. Um, watching football may also trigger ischemia and arrhythmia. This is a, on the left side, on the right side, some data we have observed in our intensive care unit patients during the World Cup uh, in 2006 in a famous game between Switzerland and Turkey. And you can really see the, the, the penalties and the goals in the ST segment analysis and the arrhythmia monitoring of this patient. Arteriosclerosis cure and eradication awaits a personalized systems approach because the biology behind this is rather complex as we have seen. On the other side, arteriosclerosis is also a simple disease. We have many factors all leading somehow during a long window of opportunity, 10, 20, 30 years where we could eradicate or cure this disease in an individual. Uh, and it leads to two versions of arteriosclerosis. One is benign, stenosis and angina. And the other is malignant, which is a triggered block rupture leading to myocardial inf infarction, stroke, heart failure and death, which determines the prognosis. Now, if we want to eradicate or cure er er arteriosclerosis in a single patient, we have many potential targets. Cholesterol metabolism, as we have heard, endothelial activation. Uh, so in principle, uh, it should be doable because even if we fail in two, three, or five of these targets, we still have other targets which may really help us. Now, arteriosclerosis is not a heart disease. Arteriosclerosis can be seen as a liver disease. And this is just to rem remind us for eradication of this disease. It's not absolutely necessary to eliminate coronary plaques. It may be as good as treating the main, the largest organ involved in this disease, the liver. And this is what our currently most active drugs, the statins, do. So liver targeting with better methods, with nanotechnologies, may be an alternative to these eradication pathways compared to what we're doing now. Arteriosclerosis is a disease of glucose homeostasis. There are well-known mechanisms how a chronically increased sugar level uh, leads to the progression of arteriosclerosis. And it's well known that uh, increased sugar levels are directly associated with body fat and weight. So uh, diabetes is also a lifestyle disease. And we have already seen that Arteriosclerosis has an event, events have a correlation with infection. Here we have done 
the work, uh, the work to look at about, about 150,000 events in Switzerland over a period of many years, uh, correlated with a, a correlation between influenza events and myocardial infarctions, and we have seen what we expected, that there is a very strong temporal coherence of uh, events in our intensive care unit and the cat labs with this uh, virus. So novel vaccines based on nanotechnologies which would eradicate influenza would also have a major benefit for arteriosclerosis eradication. Arteriosclerosis is a hereditary genetic disease, so uh, gene therapies, replacement therapies, for example, based on nanotechnologies may have an impact. I don't uh, go into detail about uh, the intrinsics of uh, the arteriosclerotic plaque, which you have already heard. I just wanted to say that this time window for eradication may not be the ultimately mature, fully evolved, vulnerable plaque, but maybe we should also think of interventions much earlier in the time course when the risk of having a clinical event is still near to zero. Arteriosclerosis is an inflammatory disease, as you have heard, also of the endothelium. We have data, other have data, which show that nicely. We also know that uh, these uh, inf uh, inflammatory markers are suited targets for particles. Uh, a multitude of nanomaterials have been shown to go to the macrophages, not all of them in plaques, but in other diseases. And in our own experience, we have also seen that uh, polymeric vesicles, for example, of various sizes are able to go deep into the plaque and bind specifically to these uh, to receptors on plaque macrophages. Uh, the characteristics of these particles certainly are very important. Receptor binding, size, charge, zeta potential. The question is what is the visible shell of such a nanomaterial, meaning is it really stealth? Does it have a corona of, of a lot of endogenous proteins around it? What are the ligands? Very important uh, question would be the release kinetics. If we want to cure a patient, it doesn't help to uh, uh, silence the disease for the next four weeks. We should silence this, the disease for the next 10 years. Uh, an alternative way to come to the plaque is not through the endothelium, but from the back door to the vasa vasorum, which are well known to correlate with the uh, inflammatory aspects of the plaque. Now, you have already nicely described the complexity of macrophage biology within the plaque, so I will skip this slide. Uh, one question is, we all know the foam cell that eats cholesterol. Is this a suited handle for eradication? Uh, we are working with foam cell models in vitro to uh, study these questions. One of the questions is, what if we target the foam cell, what do we do there? Is it a desirable therapeutic goal? So one way is to uh, in induce apoptosis in foam cells, but it's well known that such dead foam cells in the plaque lead to an increase in inflammation and attract more cells which then continue to work. So the simple cancer nanomedicine approach may be the wrong approach in arteriosclerosis. We should have a more intelligent approach to, uh, uh, to do that. One approach is to target these inflammatory plaques with drugs which are not lethal for the cell. Here, for example, we have done uh, some years ago we have targeted, uh, used nanoparticles to target statins to, uh, to plaques. What we know is that targeting, actively targeting statins leads to a huge increase in the therapeutic efficacy, in our case a, a factor of 200 or 300 fold compared to a free statin therapy. Now if we uh, come to the inflammatory plaque in the body, what do we do, uh, do there? We have already heard that corticosteroids may not be the best idea because they are known as to be an anti-inflammatory, but it seems that in the block they are not actu actually that. They are also anti-fibrotic, and anti-fibrotic fibrosis is a protection mechanism of the block which protects it against rupture. So this may be a second reason why uh, steroids in high doses in blocks may not be the, the ultimate idea. Biphosphonates have been used in systemic, in a systemic approach, and there were 
a few enthusiastic reports early on and we have never heard from this since. So it's very well possible that this apoptosis of macrophages induced by biphosphonates in blocks may have led to abolishment of those uh, studies uh, which were maybe were too enthusiastic early. Arteriosclerosis is a mechanical disease. We have stenosis and the participants of this conference show how mechanic mechanosensitive uh, liposomes can trigger a release of a drug in the lumen of such a stenosed vessel. This is certainly a very uh, nice result and very interesting. It will target the less dangerous blocks, namely the stenotic uh, lesions and not the soft block. But we will see what comes out in the long term of these results. I won't talk about uh, plaque rupture, as we have al already shown. Uh, I won't talk about the cancer aspect, the proliferative aspect of arteriosclerosis, because this has already been discussed. One option what we can do at the plug is change plug biology, not by drugs, but for example by siRNA. We are working on a stealth siRNA delivery by receptor targeting. Here you see one of these uh, carriers in the electron microscopy. They have a diameter of 23 nanometers, so they are quite small and should be well suited to come to the plug in the end. Also notable is the zeta potential uh, of uh, almost zero, which is very important for long half-life and avoidance of elimination of such carriers. And we show in this slide that in a model system, we are nicely able to suppress gene expression using such as target uh, receptor targeted SRNA, uh, siRNA approaches. Now, what is very important, arteriosclerosis is not cancer. You all have arteriosclerosis. And you all will not like the idea of getting a drug which has a 1% risk of inducing a potentially lethal immunotoxic reaction. If you had cancer with a 70% death risk in the next six months, you would say it doesn't matter at all if there is a potential side effect, just give me the drug. But in our uh, planned patient cohort, non-toxicity of the approach is probably the key requirement. And that's why we invest approximately 50% of our life energy in having the ultimately non-toxic carriers. And you see some results in the slide on the left side. So uh, there are variations of our carriers by chemical modification, which are quite active in terms of uh, complement release but it's possible really to design those polymers in a way where they are practically inert. This is also a collaboration with uh, Janos, who does a very important work in this area. So the future of treating heart attack and stroke is by eradication of arteriosclerosis by nanomedicine. Non-vascular targets may be as important as vascular targets. Eradication may imply early non-invasive detection and sustained elimination of plaques in asymptomatic, moderate-risk individuals, and extremely low-risk approaches are necessary. Inflammatory processes are important at all stages, initiation, progression, rupture, restenosis. There are many potential targets, but their relative utility is not yet known. There are many potentially useful drug classes, and there are pitfalls, unexpected biolo biologic responses, as we have seen in the steroids, toxicity, which we need to avoid from the beginning to make such treatment acceptable. Thank you for your interest. <laughs> we will we'll also postpone the questions so that we are able to uh, progress to the next.